Paul McDonald, thanks for a $10 super chat. When do you need to start worrying about amps on the ESC you're using? How do you pair motors ESC with weight? I hope 10 bucks is, thank you for the donation, Paul. Uh, 10 bucks is, I mean, you know, whatever, however much you choose to donate, I'll, I'll try to answer your question. doesn't really matter. Um, the truth is that the amp rating on most ESCs is more than you need. Uh, if you are building a drag racing quad that's going to do quarter mile pulls or whatever, and you're going to just go full throttle for 20 seconds and, you know, 100 plus miles an hour. If you're pushing the limits like that, then you you really need to think about your ESC amp rating and many other things that we won't go into here. But for typical use, none of us are pushing our battery hard enough that it can uh, exceed the current rating of our ESC. Think about this. Let's say you've got a 1500 milliamp hour 4S battery or an 1100 milliamp hour 6S battery. If you just go full throttle and leave it there, how many amps are you going to pull? What you're going to see is that there will be an initial surge in amps. Uh, perhaps it'll be 130, 150, maybe 160 amps, probably not more than that. We're talking about like a five inch mini quad, by the way. So you know, a typical five inch quad, typical KV motors, not some extreme crazy 160 mile an hour build. So you'll see a surge in amps and then that surge in amps will drop off. Now, why does it drop off? There's two reasons. The first reason is that motors unload as the quad begins moving. Think about, think about, have you ever had to push a stalled car, right? When you first start pushing the car, it's very hard to get it moving. But once the car is rolling, it's easier, easier to keep it moving because you've got that momentum going, right? And the same thing happens with, with mini quad motors and props. If you imagine a quad that is going to do a straight up punch out, okay? At the moment that you're hovering and you very first jam the throttle, at that moment, the motors need to accelerate. The props need to accelerate. And that creates a surge in current. In addition, as the props reach the target RPM, the quad begins to accelerate upward. And that acceleration causes a surge in current. Now, imagine that a couple seconds after you jam the throttle, now the quadcopter has reached a steady state. It's reached a balance between it's it's the air pushing down on it, the motors are spinning at the speed they need to spin, and it stabilizes. We say that the props unload. The air is moving through the props. The motors are no longer accelerating. They are at the desired RPM. The quad is at the targeted speed, and they're working, but everything sort of settles down. And so you'll get this surge of current, and then it'll drop off. The other reason... That this, the, the, so that's the motors unload is what we say. The other reason that we see the current drop off is that batteries, the way that batteries work, think of a battery like a sponge that you're going to squeeze water out of. Okay. And let's, uh, so let's say we've got this sponge and we, it's full of water and we squeeze the sponge bush a big gush of water comes out and then we release and the sponge slowly soaks up more water so with a battery there uh i'm gonna get a lot of this wrong because i'm not a, i don't have the all the terminology about the internals of a battery construction in my head so i apologize big big flag that some of this is going to be a little bit off but there's the the tabs right the uh, where the 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 electricity comes out of the cells right and there's the uh the electrolyte and there's ions there's electrical ions inside the battery and there is a substrate through which they move is that the electrolyte is i don't know the, the ions move through the cell and they sort of get squeezed out and when a battery is not being uh not providing current the ions sort of equalize throughout the battery substrate, similar to how that water was filling up the sponge. And then when you hit a battery hard, 
the ions, the electricity, the electrons, whatever, near the tabs, they get sucked out. And then there's an initial burst of current where the battery can provide. And then more electrical ions have to move through the battery cells to get to the tabs where the electricity comes out of the cells. So a battery can provide an initial rush of current, but then its voltage will drop and its current will drop as the electricity now has to move through the battery. Okay. And of course, that's related to the C rating. The higher the C rating of the battery, the more current it can provide. But there's always a moment where a battery can provide a big rush of current and then whew, it drops off. So going back to your question about the ESCs, sizing ESCs, we've got this 1100, 1500 milliamp hour, whatever battery. How many amps can it provide? Now, if you were to look at the C rating, you would go, oh, it can provide 250 amps. We all know that's bullshit. Battery C ratings are marketing bullshit, not tied to any real application. In some, I, like, they don't, uh, I'm not saying they just make them up, but I'm saying that uh, you have a 150C battery. It's not going to provide 150 amps for very long, okay? So, when sizing an ESC, the battery is really the limitation. That's the limitation. A typical battery might give you 150 amps for a fraction of a second or a second or maybe two seconds or maybe five seconds, but it's going to drop off because the battery's going to sag out and the motors are going to unload. So if you've got a 30 amp ESC times four, that's 120 amps. Continuous. Continuous rating your quadcopter isn't going to pull 120 amps continuously for more than a few seconds under most applications. So why don't we all just fly 30 amp CSCs? Well, one reason is marketing. We all used to fly 20 or 30 amp ESCs. Now we fly 50 or 60 amp ESCs. And that's just, are these ESCs higher rated? Probably. What we're really getting is that it, it goes back to marketing. Those 50 or 60 amp ESCs are designed to handle higher loads. And so they will be more resistant to dying under normal use, even though you're not really pulling 50 amps through the ESC most of the time. So Mad Max FPV says 30 amps is enough if you never crash. Yep. An honest 30 amp ESC will just work all day, will never exceed its amp rating. And you'd be fine. But what the manufacturers are telling you when they rate the ESCs as 40, 45, 60, they needed a way to tell you this is a tougher ESC. And when they say we designed it with 40 volt FETs, so they so it's resistant to voltage spikes, nobody cared. Nobody noticed. I mean, some people noticed, but so they just started saying, yeah, this is a 60 amp ESC to try to tell you this is a tougher ESC. And you go, well, I don't need 60 amps. Well, you might still want a 60 amp ESC. So that's the takeaway. So, oh wait, no, but I still haven't answered your question. How do you size the ESC? <laughs> the answer is, even if you buy like a 40 amp ESC, which today, the kind of ESCs that are designed for like a five inch quad, 40, 45 amps is about as small as you're ever gonna find them. They're just not making 30 amp ESCs for five inch quads anymore. Um, you just know that the lower amp rating is going to be more susceptible to damage in a crash, even though you will never exceed that amp rating under typical use. So buy a higher amp rated ESC if you can afford it and know that it'll be a little more robust. That's the answer. If you, if you're designing some, like, let's say you're building a Cinelifter and you're going to use some motor that nobody has ever used before. At that point, you need to go and put the motor on a thrust stand and see how many amps it pulls or go to the manufacturer and ask them for thrust test data. And you need to size your ESCs based on that amp rating that, that the motor has. But most of the time when you're building a quad, there will be someone else, many other people out there who have built the same quad. And you could just look at what ESC they like. If I go to build a toothpick, 
I don't know. What's a good amp rating for a toothpick? I don't know off the top of my head. Well, Kebab says 12 amps is fine. Okay. I'm just going to use 12 amp ESC because Kebab said it was fine and he knows. So just look for what somebody else who, who does it for a typical person who's not designing some new type of quad.